Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you how you can support all screen sizes out there using Jetpack Compose. I already do have such a video for XML layouts which you can check out here. However nowadays we're using Jetpack Compose and for that I don't have a video about that yet. How you can actually make sure that your app looks pretty good on all screen sizes. So let's actually jump right into my phone actually. Um, I'll actually just show you what we will build here. Something very simple, but a yeah, typical use case why you would want to support multiple screen sizes. You can see I just have two lists in the end that are arranged in a column-wise fashion. However, if we actually have a wider screen, then we could also fit these two lists next to each other. So they are actually not in a column-wise fashion, instead in a simple row. And that will exactly happen if I rotate this device. As you can see, suddenly we get two lists next to each other because we of course have more space to fill here. And the same will also apply for tablets and yeah, just larger tablets. With these strategies that I will show you here, you can simply support them all. Okay, so this is actually the initial project here. It's, yeah, as I said, just a very simple lazy column in which we have two lists, list one and list two. And each of these lists contains 10 items that are simple text here just as a simple example but of course that can apply to any type of layout you want to build and i want to show you how we can take this column and actually transform it to yeah actually two columns or two rather yeah that we have two lazy columns next to each other that's what i what i'm trying to say and i will give you a good solution that you can apply to all of your projects to easily support different screen sizes let's jump right into it and for that i will create a separate file new Kotlin class of file and I'll call this it's actually a composable function remember window info that's how I will call it we select file yes let me add that to git and we can create this composable function here remember window info it doesn't take any parameters and it will actually return something it will return a custom class that we will create here right down uh, right on there uh, it will be the data class called window info and this class will basically contain on the one hand information about our screen width and screen height but also what type of screen it actually is because in android we typically have three different main types of screens that all differ regarding their screen width in dp so Usually everything that's less than 600 dps wide is considered a compact screen, like a phone screen, for example. Then everything between 600 dp and 840 dp is usually um, yeah, the typical size for smaller tablets and everything above 840 dp is then used by larger tablets. And we'll just now make a utility class here with this window info class that just contains this information and then later on in our code we can distinguish okay what kind of screen are we actually currently at like depending on the screen width and if that is in a given bounds then we simply show this layout and else we show a different layout. That's in the end how this will work. So first of all, inside of this window info class, we will create a sealed class called window type. And we will have three different window types, exactly the types I just talked about. On the one hand, we have compact for yeah, just small screens like phones. We have medium for smaller tablets and not window info window type and we have expanded for larger tablets or just yeah if you if you have a long um a long tablet that's yeah there's a long seven inch tablet for example and you rotate that then your screen width is also of course larger and it would be expanded here in this case you can you also just saw that on my phone even though it's a phone if I rotate it, it suddenly switches to a different window type here. So it started with compact, but when I rotate it, it of course has more width to offer. So we can simply then use, or then we get the, the medium value here to show something different in our UI. Hope that got clear. Um, let's add the screen width info here. So we will simply pass that for the width. We'll also, oh, not window info, no type again, um, screen height info. 
So we also have these values for the height. And I'll just also attach the normal screen width here in DP and the screen height in DP. And then we already have this utility class, which we can then return here in our function. Window info. And now to actually create such an object, we can simply use the configuration we can get from local configuration dot current. And then we return window info. So our class here. And now starting with screen with info. Want to set that equal to when, when that configuration screen with DP. So with this configuration, we get now get access to the screen with in DP units. If that's less than 600, so as I said, if that's less than 600 DP, we want to return our compact class. We can duplicate this then. If it is actually less than 840 DP, we want to return medium. And else, we're on very large screens, we want to return expanded. And we can do pretty much the same thing for screen height info. Simply copying that one expression. Replacing this with screen height dp. Screen height dp as well. Just that these values differ a little bit here. So for compact, we will use 480. And for medium, we will use 900. And everything above 900 dp uh, screen height is considered an expanded screen. And if you're wondering where I get these values from, those just come from the Android documentation. So those are real official values and not just some values I experimented with. So I really recommend using the same. And we also need to pass something here for the screen width. Screen width, um, just configuration screen width dp. Since that requires a dp value, we can just write dot dp. And finally, screen height, configuration, screen height dp, dot dp. And we already wrote our little utility function, which you can now use wherever we want in our Compose project, like in main activity. So here, above our lazy column, we will now get our window info using remember window info. Now, that contains all the information about the window at that specific state. And we can use it to distinguish, okay, what kind of uh, window type do we currently actually have, like compact, medium, or expanded. And based on that, we show a different composable. That's really the whole magic behind that. So starting with this lazy column that we already have, that just contains our two lists in a column-wise fashion. So first the first list, and then the second list. That should only be shown for compact screen widths. So only if we have a very narrow screen, then we want to show these lists on top of each other, basically, like we do it here. If we, however, have a screen that's larger than this compact level, or rather wider than this compact level, then we want to show these next to each other. So, for example, when we rotate our phone, or when we just have a tablet that has a wider screen than our typical phones. So let's actually start with checking if the window info, screen width info, is actually compact because in that case we simply want to show this lazy column and of course um, in a real project you could make this a separate composable so just organize this a little bit more and not have a very messy if statement here but for this very simple tutorial I think this is fine so in the else case of this if statement if we're not on a compact screen width we know that we are at least on a medium screen width. So we know that our screen width is at least 600 dp wide. So in that case, we can now just write our composable how it should look like instead on that screen size. So here we of course want to have a row because we want to have these two lists next to each other. We want to say modifier is modifier dot fill max width. So our row just occupies our whole screen width. And then we can pretty much simply copy this lazy column paste it here in our row and just remove this second items block because we now have two lazy columns essentially since we want to display these next to each other. Instead of uh, saying fill max size for this lazy column, we can say weight 1f. 
So with that, since we put it in a row, we can just make sure that each lazy column we have here will occupy the same space. So 50% of our screen width. We can then copy this lazy column and paste it another time well, below here. Um, fill max width, that's fine. Let's change the color here, this one to green again. So we just, we can just distinguish between these lists a little bit easier. But that should already be it. And of course, with this window info class, you now have a much more fine grained control. We have a very simple example here, we just check, okay, is it a compact screen width, then we show this, else we just show the other type. But of course, you can check depending on compact, what happens if it's medium, then you show something differently. Um, or if it's an expanded screen, you could even then show something, some other kind of layout here. However, for the simple tutorial here, I think this is fine and this helps you to get it. Let's launch this on my uh, device here. This is not it yet. There we go. You can see in the compact view, it looks just like uh, I, I showed you before. However, when I now rotate my device, then you can see these lists display next to each other very beautifully. Oops. Yeah, so very quick tutorial. I hope you like this. And if you are actually new to Jetpack Compose and you haven't understood effect handlers yet, that's a quite complex topic, especially if you're, yeah, if you're new to this approach to, uh, to design your app with Jetpack Compose, then you definitely want to click here and don't miss this video in which I really go through all effect handlers out there.